Hi, my name is Steve Bitterman. I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew on the Keith Andrew Network. Let me tell you something. The guy says that, you know, uh, he's special needs, but I'm telling you, I, I don't see it at all. Uh, he's proof of the pudding. He's been doing this for over 10 years now. His anniversary was last month. And happy anniversary, Keith. Uh, watch the show, you'll see. He is the perfect interviewer. He knows what he's talking about. You'll enjoy the show. Please join in. Thanks much, Keith. I love you. For people who want to know what is the Keith Angie Network, the whole point of my talk show is to show you that even with having a word and disability, I can style them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of word and disabilities and disabilities to never give up and prove people wrong. Prove to them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you're going to be to prove them and style them out to something. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keith Andrew, and this is 1050. That is right, 1050. This will be aired on LinkedIn, Twitter. Let me see, LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and all social media. If you're watching, definitely leave a comment and make sure to subscribe. Our goal is to reach a hundred and more views, so me and the guests would love to interact with you guys, so definitely leave a comment. Now, the last time you were on the show, we did a group interview, and I always yes. do a group interview to kind of kind of feel the energy if I pick the right person, and I promised right. you and Tom we will do a one-on-one -on -one interview, and here we are. Took some time, but here we got to work. <laughs> And as you heard from the recommendation, you already introduced yourself. But the first question I want to ask you is tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Steve Bitterman. I'm a background actor right now. Also, I'm uh, getting into voiceover work too. Uh, I think I mentioned to you uh, offline that I, I've taken a course and I'm certified now uh, to do voiceover work. But my main uh, responsibility right now has been in background acting and uh, it's been for two years but before that I was 45 years in the corporate tax world uh, making it up to a senior tax manager level and I just wanted to do something totally different and um, a year and a half ago when I retired my wife retired as well we moved out of uh, Queens in, in New York City up to uh, the Hudson Valley and uh, where we are uh, our main function when I'm when I'm not acting and my wife's not uh, substitute teaching is uh, grandma grandpa daycare for our 19 month old beautiful granddaughter. Uh, my grand my, my my daughter and son in law live upstairs. We live downstairs. My wife and I. And uh, while in retirement, we uh, do some uh, wonderful babysitting for our granddaughter. Oh, it's absolutely! It's always great to be a grandparent. Yes, absolutely. Yes, great. So the question I want to ask you is, what sure. attracted you to begin your career? Well, uh, I had watched uh, a number of you know, these me uh, medical and uh, um, um, police officer type of TV shows. And uh, I felt that, you know what, I, I could be that victim or whatnot, just, just to really get started. Or uh, as a, a CSI fan, be that cadaver on, on the slab getting opened up. So uh, I, I, I found that interesting and I wanted to get away totally from uh, a corporate or a, an office job setting. And I felt that would be a good, a good take. And it's something that I wouldn't have to do full time, just really more as a hobby. But I'm enjoying it more and more as I go along. And another question I want to ask is, well, this is also a subject, but why not throw it out? <laughs> so have you worked, besides me, obviously, have you worked with people with disabilities and are you willing to work with people with disabilities? Well, it's funny you should ask. Uh, my younger daughter, who actually lives with us here in uh, in New City, New York. No, yeah, that's amazing. And, you know, people in the school system, like, they don't want to take the time to sit down with you. If you can't, like, snap your fingers or one, two, three, yeah, they, or five seconds or whatever the hell it is, if you can't get it right the first two times, they like to slap any label on it. Understood. Understood. And uh, I think I did see that with some of the uh, 
teachers that my, my daughter had. You know, once she got into junior high school, we did get uh, her into a specialized school where she was able to thrive with uh, fellow students uh, in the same boat. And, you know, she graduated high school and uh, went on to get a four-year degree. And now it's teaching here locally. So we're very proud of her. No, likewise. So let me ask you, do you sure. enjoy being a background actor or do you want to be the main actor? I enjoy the background uh, acting aspect. I um, don't know. I mean, I've, I've practiced uh, trying to um, learn a lot of lines. I, I can learn a few lines here and there. I'm not sure if I can really run a full gamut of, of, of uh, an hour long show or half hour long show with, with uh, learning the scripts and all that. So, I mean, I, I would like to give it a try just for starting out slowly and see what happens. But at this point, the background acting is sufficient for me at, uh, right now. And uh, I mean, I would like to grow into uh, a few more lines uh, along the way and see if, you know, if it, if it catches on. Yes, I'll, I'll try to become a main actor or at least a day player where I'm, I'm able to uh, have a few lines here and there. No, absolutely. Hashtag absolutely. Yes. So the next one I want to ask you, with everything that you accomplished in your life, what is the biggest accomplishment? Well, I guess, um, you know, making it through the, the, the corporate tax road, moving up the corporate tax ladder. Uh, but really, I would say that just being able to raise two beautiful daughters and um, have, have a wonderful family life. All right. <laughs> Sorry, I and thought I mean, there were smart to it. <laughs> so the other one I want to ask you is for people who want to take your advice about being a background actor, what are some of the best advice you have ever given up, gotten? Well, you know, when uh, I was uh, working on the, the show Kaleidoscope, uh, the director, Robert Townsend, he actually you know, really gave us good direction by giving us a, a rehearsal in in holding, which had never been done by any of the other uh, you know, directors that I've worked with. And that, that helped along, but he was able to uh, point out, yes, Steve, you know, you, you should be over here, do this, do that. You're, you've got a good knack for it. They seem that, you know, they, they say that they I've been told that I have uh, the passion for uh, the background acting and maybe there is the ability to move up to the next level. And here's an interesting question. You know, how comfortable are you speaking in front of a group of people? Well, I mean, as uh, you know, in, in the corporate world, I did have to uh, hold meetings and uh, I did give some tax seminars along the way to my fellow workers, whether they uh, um, they were in the tax department or uh, around the country, I would travel to uh, speak at seminars. So I'm, uh, you know, as long as I'm well prepared with my notes, I I'm fine with speaking in front of people. So there's no problem there. As long as I'm prepared, that's the key is preparation. Now, same question, but we're going to change the end into it. How comfortable are you teaching of people? For an example, for people like me who have disabilities, right. if I would ask you for your advice, would you be able to teach me the, the do's and don'ts? I believe that I would be able to show you, and again, from my own experience with my home life with my daughter, you know, we had to, uh, you know, it, 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 it's a matter of patience. As long as you're patient and you realize that the person that you're working with uh, may not have the full capability the first time around, you need to be able to stay focused and not lose your own grip on what you're trying to teach the person. So uh, yeah, that that's, Something that I've done in the past and I, I can do if need be. No, I agree. Yeah. And there's a lot of people I worked with who do have patience to put up with me. And there's other people who has a patience of a bar of soap. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of like you have to feel like you, if you're working with someone, you're, you know, right now I'm listening to you. You actually feel, have to feel like, you know, you, you give a damn. So right. if you feed off positive energy and you feel comfortable working with this person, then it's going to be a great show. It's going to be right. a great work environment. If you're working with someone who doesn't give a shit, then it's going to reflect back to you as in, why am I even bothering? 
you know, this person obviously doesn't care and made up their mind already. So you right. kind of fall under that mindset of you're in a lose lose situation. Right. Well, I mean, that's what we had with uh, some of the grade school teachers. My daughter, you know, it was a matter of, you know, hey, uh, she's not going to make it to college yet. We had, we got we were able to obtain a, an advocate that got her into a special uh, school where she went to middle school and high school and she, with working with her own uh, compatriots in the same category as she is a, a label, quote unquote. And uh, she was able to thrive there. But yes, uh, they, these uh, teachers really shouldn't be in that line of work if, if they cannot uh, work with someone that may not be at the same level as some of the others. So they, the teacher needs to be able to step back and say, listen, here's what I need to do for you. I'm going to give you some extra time or here's a, a, an assistant teacher that I have that will work with you to uh, get the things done. So it's a matter of patience again. And the teacher really, if they're pushing the, the special needs, quote unquote, student aside, then maybe they should be uh, find another line of work. No, I agree. Now, actually, let me ask you, do you find the teachers to be more bullies than actually the students? I I, I don't really see uh, teachers being a bully. My, my, my wife is a uh, was a public school teacher in the New York City school systems. And, you know, you do get uh, a, a diverse uh, class of uh, students. And, um, you know, she's been able to work with with the tougher students as well as the easier students over that, that, you know, are willing to learn and whatnot. So, um, you know, it's just a matter of being able to work with the students and, uh, you know, have to, you have, you have to take what you're given uh, when, when the net, when the third graders come in, come into your fourth grade class from the year before, you know, you are, you have to be able to uh, work with a diverse group. So uh, that, 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 that's my take on that. that you know, uh, well, you mentioned a uh, public school. Where, if you don't mind for acting, where in the city did your wife used to work? She worked in Corona, Queens. Now she's working as a, a, a substitute teacher here in, in New City, New York, in the Clarkstown schools. So, oh, that's uh, wonderful. You no, know, and Queens County is is extremely diverse, and it's one probably the most diverse borough in in the city of New York. So, you know, she got she you know through the years teaching over thirty years. You know, she had students. They were easy to work with and that were not easy to work with. And, you know, she just you know, had to just bear down and, and, and help and spend a little more time with those that needed that additional work help. Well, if she's interested, she's more than welcome to be a guest on my show. Sure. You know, she's actually a, written a book uh, known uh, called Simon the Snail uh, that was based on some of the um, issues that we had with, with our daughter. And uh, it's about a snail uh, in a family uh, of, of again, the, it's a paradox because it's sn snails are known to be slow, and this uh, Simon is a slower than slow um, snail. And just the the issues that the this Simon had gone through in public schools and what what, what not. So uh, that that wouldn't be a bad idea. I'll, I'll speak to her about that. Sure. But it's funny you should say that. People say turtles are slow, but snapping turtles, if you turn the wrong way or you blink. It'd be missing a finger. So let's imagine people always say turtles are slow, they're stupid. But let's imagine if I find this, I would send it to you. They say snapping turtles can you know, snap the finger off in an instant. For mm -hmm. something that slow to do something like that, that's absolutely really amazing. Right, right, right. But again, uh, this is more of the slower uh, animal, the, 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 the snail. As you know, I'm slow as a snail uh, more than, than turtles. So. The story is about Simon, who's a snail. Uh, but uh, I understand what you're saying that, you know, turtles, they, they may be slow, but, you know, they could, uh, phew, that's it, you know. <laughs> Understood. But, uh, but well, let me add this one. You're going to enjoy this one. Every, I know I mentioned this in the beginning. With everything that you accomplish in your life, what is your one thing you would say if it wasn't for this, it wouldn't be my claim to fame? Well, I, I guess. Marrying my wife was probably the, uh, the the best thing that I had done because, uh, you know, I uh, she kept me on the straight and narrow, I guess. I grew up in a New York City housing project, but I'm very proud to have been a product of New York City housing because I was able to see all the uh, diversity uh, within the projects. But the thing is, we were one solidified group. Uh, they, they, we were so cohesive and there were no there were no there were no 
there was no difference in colors of, of the individuals living there. And it was great growing up there in the 60s. Uh, I'm, I'm proud to be a, a product of New York City Housing Authority. So uh, that was that. You actually bring up a good point. And yes, I do have a card. But actually, I don't have a lot of questions. So I, uh, sure. I do have a lot of questions. But you bring right. up a good subject I want to talk to you about. Everything in the media, do you think it's 100% true that the city is successful? And do you think uh, Mayor Adams is doing a good job, or do you just think he has his head up his ass? Well, I, I think he had uh, a lot to uh, pick up from from the, the prior mayor, and uh, he's, I think he's doing a much better job than Mayor de Blasio had done. And, you know, again, he has to pick up a lot of the pieces and, you know, it's been it's been difficult for him. I know that we just have we just re have a, a new police commissioner. And I think uh, part of the issue there with the police commissioner was the fact that him being a, a, a police officer who worked his way up the ranks, he really didn't give her the autonomy that she really needed. So I guess he was over. I think he may be oversimplifying um, or maybe watching over too closely. He should, uh, uh, I guess, allow some of the strings to be free for uh, his uh, subordinates to, to work on their own, especially in the police department. He shouldn't have to, you know, uh, put such a, a rein on on the individuals uh, on, on the team there. Let, the, let them do their thing. Well, you can say the same thing about uh, Barack Obama when he was president. He wanted he acted more like a celebrity than a president because he was always on TV. And I mean, of course, you want to get yourself out there, but you need sure. to act presidential. You don't always have to be on TV every single day. Uh, but going back to the city, you know, we have these idiots doing subway surfing. Uh, people just, right. it's like the Wild West. You know, we not saying we don't want to have roles like a dictatorship, but we need to bring, to bring the city Back. I think from Mayor Giuliani, not a big fan of him, but right. on September 11th, he did a good job, oh, absolutely. Of, a perfect job of keeping everything in order, and he made the city safer. Since then, it's kind of like anything goes, you know, subway surfing, right. um, and especially social media, but I want to ask you, you have these jackasses, and it's uncensored, by the way, you can say anything like you have these jackasses who go yeah. to concerts, uh, I think one uh, threw a drink at Carl B. And if I butcher her name, I apologize. Right, right. Uh, uh, Ms. B. Uh, you had one person throw their dead mother's ashes at Pink. And That's then you have another incident. And it's kind of like one were security. Two, apparently, security is not doing a good job if they're going to come in with this crap. And it's kind of like, you know, one thing I don't like about um, Mayor Blasio is the no bail roar. You can right. have someone who's been arrested 35 times, 35 freaking times, and they say, okay, well, don't do it again, and they put them back on the street. Uh, we need mental institutions. We need more prisons. Uh, right. We need to get, you know, the mental health thing under control. If you need right. help, go over there, get off the streets. But right now, it's like, it's the Wild West because I have no, just one person wants me to go back to the city and say, hey, you, when do you want to come to the city? I don't want to go to the freaking city. And that goes back to what I was beginning to ask you in the beginning of the show. How much does the media feed into your fear? You know, because every time you watch Fox or CNN, there's always a rape, rapes and murders and killings. It's in your fun claims. So is it true right. that this is all oh, what happens or is it just if it's sales, that's what they're going to pitch? Well, the the problem is that we're every every we're all polarized because of the media. You know, you've got the right and you've got the left, and there's no. Uh, I try to stay within the confines, in the middle somewhere. I mean, uh, I'm I'm not liking what I'm seeing 
currently, but um, you know, it's a matter of we 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 need to somehow get back together. And I, I'm, I'm, I don't really want to go and get into the politics of the whole thing, but uh, you know, I I would vote either way if need be if I saw the right candidate. And um, that, so I'm going to leave it at that as far as that's concerned. But I do see that media, so not, not not just the the, the public media that we see, but the social media, people getting out yeah. there. And what you mentioned about the subway serving, you know, people like to, to show themselves doing these things. And it's crazy. And then there needs to be more gun control, as you mentioned, in, in New York City, as well as the, the whole country. Uh, it's ridiculous what's going on. And you mentioned these concerts. Look what happened at the Jason Aldean concert in, in Las Vegas a few years ago. I mean, uh, someone from Window just started shoot, shoot, shooting at the crowd. I mean, that, that's totally outrageous. So. And that's the biggest thing is everyone says we need more security. It's like, yes, we do. September 11th is a perfect example of that. Um, January 6th is an example of that, even right. though that was a inside job. Right, so, right. But it's kind of like, it's like the, it's like the expression they always say over the years. And they're not meant to be funny. So what the inmates run the asylum? And it's kind of like, where do you draw the line as saying we need to go? But I'm not on the right. I'm not on the left. I'm just saying how I feel. We need a state of sanity because I'm yes. tired. I'm just tired of you know, you know, BS. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. I yep. oh, go I'm, ahead. I'm, sorry. I'm not. Again, I, I agree with you there as far as we got to stop with the BS. But again, it just keeps coming from, from the right and from the left. You know, like you mentioned, CNN, you got Fox. And never the tween shall they meet. They should both, they should get into the ring, into a steel cage match, the right and the left, and just let, let them duke it out and see what happens. Funny you should mention that. <laughs> Funny you should mention that while we're on the subject before I pass the show over to you. Social media, you know, Today, I was looking at my phone, and I saw, oh, a new update, and I saw X, and I said, what the hell is X? So Elon Musk, you know, schmuck he is, um, yeah. said, no more Twitter. Twitter's gone. It's dead and buried. It's now going to be called X. Yeah. Well, if you really wanted to put the nail in the coffin by changing the name, hey, you know, a good job on that. You know, he fired everyone who was in charge of Twitter. Um, right. he, Twitter is pretty much going to be gone in the next couple of months, maybe a year or so. Uh, but uh, I'm going to say this about social media. Um, Joe Biden will be impeached. So I'm not saying when or where, but if those tapes do come out, and you know eventually there will be a leak. Um, hopefully there will be a new president. I'm not saying Trump fits or anything, but I will vote for Chris Christie. Or uh, you bring back, um, trying to think of, felt hurting myself. Um, 2012, the guy with the magic gun to her, oh, McRomney. Yeah. You know, he, he would be a good candidate, but you know, it, it doesn't really make a difference on that. But the point right. is social media needs to be controlled. You know, right. it's nice to say you have freedom. Yes. But on this show, you have freedom of speech, you have freedom of yeah. self-expression. But when you have too much freedom, that's when you're ex you're waiting for something to happen. So you're playing a game of Jenga and you're like, okay, social media, let's pull this out. And you're waiting for it to fall. Right. Um, you know, um, I'm with you there. And again, social media to me is is the root of all evil, I guess you might want to say. That uh, you know, if, if, it's, if it's used, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be abused, just like everything else. I mean, me, uh, if you see any of my posts, that I'm, it's all maybe just family things. I try to keep away from anything political, anything that might stir the pot or anything like that. I mean, I've seen, I, I've got friends on the right, I've got friends on the left, I've got friends in the middle. Uh, but I, I really have not dealt my hand on social media because I, I don't agree with with with, uh, with doing that. I'd like to just stay you know, uh, right on the top of the fence, not tipping either way. <laughs> no, I, I agree with you. No, social media should be used for business. If you're not doing it for right. business or interacting with your family, get the hell off it. 
<laughs> True. But True. Uh, what's that being said, what's coming up next for you on the horizon? And how can our fans and listeners stay in touch with you? Well, uh, you'll be able to see me uh, in, uh, well, I, I was just on uh, Murders. I'll be in Murders in the Building, but it's uh, in, in a background. Uh, um, I don't know, there's a spoiler involved, but uh, someone's going to be getting married. And I'm actually in the scene across the street from uh, when that person was getting married uh, is running out of the building. So you'll see that probably in one of the later episodes. Um, I've got a couple of uh, independent uh, projects working. One is going to be up in Albany, New York. And that area and uh, one in downtown Manhattan. But I do want to give a shout out to uh, some of the independent uh, um, movie makers that I've worked with. And uh, really, uh, McCall Overby on uh, this film RX Call, you can see that on Tubi. I'm, I'm in that. I'm, that's probably my most prominent role, uh, as well as Wesley Wang, who's an up and coming uh, director, movie maker, who's uh, right now. Uh, going to uh, to uh, Harvard and uh, he's learning his craft there and uh, he's a he's going to be somebody sometime in the future and then I have a local uh, friend of mine uh, John Galligan who I will be in uh, his current film that's being filmed the uh, he, he loves Indiana Jones and he's making a, a film right now Indiana Jones and the ancient caves of Inwood that I will be playing an archaeological professor in so those are some of the things right now I'm working on and uh, Again, I want to give those three uh, directors a shout out: uh, Wesley Wang, John Galligan, and McCall Overby for you know, giving me uh, the initial opportunities as a background actor. I mean, I've done a number of TV shows, but really, I've never had any lines. It's really just me walking by the window or uh, just eat, 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 eating in the background a, a fake meal or whatever. But, uh, so I'm looking forward to growing in that regard. And as you said at the very beginning, uh, I'm not really looking that far ahead to become a main star. Uh, but uh, if that's that's the way the cars are are for me, then I'll go for it. But right now, I want to start slowly. Background acting, day player, and then we'll see what happens from there. I agree with you. I do have a couple of questions for you off the air. But our sure. goal for our part two interview, as I said, this will be shared on LinkedIn and all social medias. Our goal is to reach 100 and more views for us to do a part two. Leave your comments, right. any suggestions, you would like me to do, change up the format. But until we meet again, I catch you later. Thank you. You got it, Keith. Listen, everybody join in. <laughs>